Amendment 16 in the names of Senators Rowan and Black. Uh, Senator Rowan. Thank you. Um, thank you, Cahirlock. Thank you, Minister. Um, I'm obviously very conscious of the sensitive nature of the area um, that this bill seeks to regulate, and I'm aware of the competing rights and obligations and the difficult task um, that you have, Minister, in relation to balancing those rights and obligations. Um, an issue of concern um, is really for me is the, the, the potential position some families may find themselves in, especially from low-income and um, vulnerable parents. I suppose if we look at the, the children that are currently in, in, the, in the, the care of the state, a large majority of these children were born during a time of rapid boom and bust, which meant that the consecutive cuts to family support services, to, to social welfare, to community projects, to employment, um, was also matched with an increase of children uh, into, into, into care. So there's a direct correlation, I believe, between austerity and the amount of children during that time that went into care. And I think that this is something that we really need to consider when we look at removing parental consent. We have a, a long history, I suppose, that's morally wrong in relation to doing the wrong thing in relation to parents and children. Um, I feel that my, my amendment is extremely reasonable in relation to it's just to state that the child and family agency are satisfied that all possible supports were offered to the parent before consent is removed. Um, I sat at many case conferences supporting and advocating um, on behalf of the parent throughout my years working in the addiction sector. Um, I suppose I can home in on that, that in relation to my experience, but it also relates to people suffering with mental health or a disability or um, that have experienced domestic violence within the home and their child um, is then removed from the home for safety. But in relation to looking maybe just as a, as a case for an example to use, um, I remember a child being taken from the mother um, and the mother pleading with the social services to find her a place in the Ashley Centre, which is in uh, Blanchard Town and Coolmine, which is for um, the, the mothers who are addicts to maintain and look after their children and also receive treatment. There was a two-year waiting list at that time for that mother. And, and so that child was taken. And as soon as the child is removed from the family, um, the support and offer of supports from social services stops. So when the child is still in the home and they're trying to maintain the child within the home with the parent, there is support there and offers of parenting courses and several different things like that. But when the child goes into foster care, um, you know, if we're telling a parent to meet X, Y and Z needs, whether that be adequate housing um, in relation to income, in relation to removing a violent partner from the household, we can't then expect them to do that alone. Um, we need to be able to be sure that the adequate supports and resources were offered to, to those parents to meet those needs. I, by, in, no, in no shape or form, ever want to get in the way of a child being moved towards a stable, stable home and family. But I think this is just one requirement just to say that um, the Child and Family Agency are satisfied that all reasonable offers of support were made to the parents um, in this. And if they were, well then, I mean, it is up to the parent to take them support. But if them supports were never put in place, if them resources are never put in place, and if that, you know, key working with the parent for the parent to be able to meet those needs that are required to care for their children, um, well then it's not a failure on the parent, it's a failure on the state. And I just would like for the state to take some responsibility in, in advocating also for the parents and being able to offer them some, uh, some assistance in meeting the needs that are required. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Higgins, do you wish to say if you're do you wish Senator Higgins first? Uh, yes, I'm just going to speak briefly in, in support of this amendment. And I'd urge the Minister to consider taking it on board and, and accepting it, because I do believe it, is, uh, it, it strikes a very clear balance. Um, we're very aware that there's, a, you know, again, I would... I would recognise the importance of security and stability and I would recognise the importance of a timeline being set so that we don't have children in limbo for a long period of time. And I, I realise um, a lot of the positive intent in, in this section in terms of ensuring that there, that there are mechanisms through by which um, children in foster care can move towards a situation of adoption. But I do believe it is important that we recognise that there are many situations which may cause difficulty and they may cause difficulty for periods um, you know in that period of three years it needs to be seen not simply as a waiting period but a period of active engagement and work to see what opportunity or what situation may come about it may be that a parent will move back into being a situation of being a main carer or it may be that they never achieve that role but that a foster care situation with an ongoing contact program might be the more appropriate option
you wish to comment yes, on that? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, and I do want to respond to this at length. And, uh, and, and before I, I, I suppose I give the, the response that uh, I've worked uh, with my uh, officials and also uh, the Parliamentary Legal Council uh, in relation to providing uh, to the senators, um, uh, Ruan and, and Black, and then being supported by Senator Higgins, um, that, that we did take quite a bit of time taking a look at this. Uh, to respond to you in light of where we are now in relation to this, um, in, in relation to this uh, amendment, um, it, 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 it um, troubles me that um, troubles me that it's possible that what you describe uh, in, in terms of what's actually going on may, or what has gone on rather, may still be going on. Possibly, I don't know. Uh, uh, in, in, a, in a significant way that we may need to, to attend to it. Uh, I'm not sure in the way that you, you recommend, uh, Senator Ruan, uh, but there may be some scope still. I'm just going to say that at the very beginning here before I give this fulsome response in terms of where we are at now uh, in, in, in terms of continuing our conversation on, on this, th these particular issues. So of the Child Care Act 1991 provides that the agency in carrying out its functions will regard the welfare of the child as the first and paramount consideration and insofar as practicable give due consideration having regard to his age and understanding to the wishes of the child. It will also have regard to the rights and duties of the parents and the principle that it is generally in the, it is generally in the best interest of a child to be brought up in, in his or her own family. The agency has also advised me where there are concerns about the welfare of a child, it carries out a comprehensive assessment, including a parental capacity assessment. And this assessment includes the development of danger statements, child protection plans, and safety plans. Additionally, child protection case conferences and family welfare conferences, senators referred to some of these, are convened to ensure that all parties are fully aware of the issues and concerns and that there is an agreed plan of action to ensure the welfare and protection of the child. The parents are included in all aspects of the plan and are given clear guidance on how to adequately care for their child in order to meet the threshold for adequate care and protection. They are encouraged to receive support via support workers and parenting courses. They are invited to participate in all planning meetings and supported and encouraged to have their views heard. I have no evidence to indicate that the issues raised by the Senator, therefore, are not adequately addressed in current legislation and practice. And in addition, I am concerned upon advice receives that the proposed amendment could give rise to significant anomalies or indeed operational inequalities. And for those reasons, I am not at this moment accepting the amendment. Thank you, Minister. Um, there's a few things I'd like to say. I looked back through several parts of the bill myself to see where the safeguards were for parents. Um, the safeguards are more time frames and, a, a, you know, if you look to section 14, there's a part in section 14, section 54, section 24 and some of them subsections. I mean, my amendment in relation to some of the parts in section 14 where it lays out the, the, the possible chances where a parent can intervene um, to stop the order happening, okay? But at no point through any part of the bill does it state that there's an obligation for support in relation to offers of placement okay so in my experience and um, you know I said I've sat in cherry orchard on many occasions where I've had social workers ask me where should they uh, where should they um, where should the parent go for help where should the parent go for detox or where is there a women's refuge if it's domestic violence there's a serious lack of information in social services and connection in relation to projects where they can they, they suggest to parents what they should do they do not intervene to make them things happen okay so if you have a two three year waiting list for somewhere for somebody to receive help for something so you're nearly at the end of your three year court order there and your child is gone um, i'm not satisfied in any shape or form when i went through the bill i mean in section 14 um, my amendment is obliging that in the circumstances where an application uh, for a HC order is sought that the child and family agency has been satisfied that a reasonable effort was made to support the parents if 
if I feel that your department and, and the people involved are saying that these supports are available, when I don't see why that can't be cemented into the bill that you are satisfied, um, I don't see why it shouldn't fit in there if it is one of the criteria that are, are currently exists within the Child and Family Agency. Uh, in relation to Section 4, my amendment clarifies the obligation of the Child and Family Agency in respect of an order and the standard required, um, i.e. every reasonable effort in support to the parents of a child who was subject to adoption. I think I would also like to note that we have to remember when these do go to the High Court and goes through the processes, um, the children are in the care of the state and the power lies within the state. Okay? The children from poor backgrounds are overrepresented in the care system. So that means mainly those children are coming from undereducated families who will lack capacity to advocate themselves at a high court level, even for them to intervene. And if they haven't had the adequate supports being given to them throughout those three years to engage in any sort of programme, engage in any sort of help, they will not have the capacity to advocate and intervene at high court level. So I feel that the children and family agencies should be satisfied that they did receive that support so that they are even in a position to put their hands up and say, no, wait, hang on, I, I, I asked for help and I did didn't get it. Um, and, and, you know, in all my years of working in relation to addiction and homelessness, I have met very few people that are on the ground to have children that have the capacity to stand up to the state and stand up into the High Court. And I feel that the Children and Family Agency owe it to them to ensure that they have received the adequate supports um, to, to, to be able to do that and advocate on behalf of themselves and uh, on behalf of the children. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. That is that the best interests of the child are the paramount consideration and adoption proceedings. And so this bill strengthens the provisions around the best interests and hearing the voice of the child. This proposed amendment that you've put forward along with Senator Black moves from, or could be perceived to move from, the current child-centered focus to a parent-adult-centered focus, which is inconsistent with the policy intention of the bill. There's also a risk that the amendment could be providing a statutory right to services for a limited cohort of parents, which would be inequitable. Um, and as well, the amendment in this regard, and in light of some of the other things that I've said, raises some, con some legal and constitutional concerns and consultation and formal legal advice from the Attorney General would then be required. Delighted that, Senator. Do you wish to withdraw or press your amendment? Um, I'll press the amendment. Result is Tar 21 Neil 18. The amendment is carried. Next amendment, number 17, in the name of Senator Warren.